What's up guys? Here with Anthony Johnson, Strength Clinic, Orlando, Florida. I'm going to show you guys what a typical high intensity training workout looks like. We're only going to do a handful of exercises, but the difference is we're going to do a very high intensity of effort in these exercises. So maybe about five or six exercises, which to most you may not seem like much based on the way traditionally people do them, but we're going to demonstrate here that a high level of intensity, how effective it can be, how uncomfortable it can be, and how efficient it's going to be. So by the end of these five or six exercises, he's going to be completely wiped out. It's going to feel like he worked out for two hours. We're going to choose um, multi-joint exercises which work large muscle groups and multiple muscle groups at one to make it a little more efficient. And uh, in each exercise, we're going to go to momentary muscle failure. So with good controlled form, he's going to reach a point where he cannot move the resistance anymore. And this is what really drives the stimulus home for improving muscular strength and growth and all of the trainable factors of functional ability, you know, your cardiovascular system, all that other stuff. So we're going to start on a lateral raise exercise. This is pretty much his routine that he's kind of used to. It's a good routine. So we're going to start with, with the upper body and uh, work our, or a small muscle group on the upper body and work our way towards the bigger movements down the road. So just one set to failure. There's really no need for a warm up. The first couple of low intensity repetitions, that's going to be his warm up. It's going to get blood flowing, the heart pumping a little more. And um, then we're just going to crush it from there on out. All right. So you ready? I'm going to time his time under load. We're looking for, you want to choose a weight which allows you to reach muscle failure. Again, the point in perfect form where you can't move the resistance around eight to 12 reps, or I like to time it, so maybe around you know 45 to 90 seconds. So I'm gonna go through and kind of time his time under load and cue him on um, any sort of changes he needs to make in his form in order to make him more effective and joint congruent, and then push him basically uh, to a point of level of muscle fatigue that generally won't be able to get on his own. So that's where I come in. All right, I'm bring this up. All right, so whenever you're ready, with each one of these exercises, you want to start it slowly. You almost barely want to budge the weight in the beginning. And this is to allow your body to the time to recruit the muscle fiber for the movement. So we're just going to start slowly whenever you're ready to go for it. And you want about a five second positive, which is the lifting phase, about a five second negative. And you want nice, slow turnarounds at the bottom of the repetition. This allows you to reduce the re recruitment of momentum, which is going to keep continuous load on the muscle, making, making it more efficient, more effective, and definitely safer. So you notice too, as you know, it gets a little more intense, cardiovascular system is going to be working a little harder because it's got to supply the muscle tissue with what it needs and get rid of the, the waste. So he's gonna increase his rate of breathing a little bit. Notice how he's very stoic. He's not grimacing, he's not grunting. He's concentrating on the task at hand, which is targeting and loading the deltoids. We're at about a 60 seconds TUL. All right, now push a little harder. A drive through, a drive through, a drive through. Keep going, up, 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 up. Good. We're going to try for maybe one or two more. Keep a slow turn around at the bottom. Easy through here. Good. Now push, push, push. Try to finish. Now continue to contract here for five seconds. Five, four, three, two. Ease it down. Good. Relax. So we hit that one to failure. We're moving right over to chest press now. We've got everything preset. He's ready to go. So rather than do, you know, two, three, five sets to failure, if you do, or five sets in general, if you do one set to failure, like we just did, and like we're gonna do throughout all the rest of the exercises, research has shown there is no additional benefit, zero, to doing additional sets to failure. You've already stimulated the additional sets to failure are just going to make it harder for you to recover. So that's why we only do one. There is a, a point of diminishing returns in exercise, and we try to avoid that. And that's where additional sets come in. So whenever you're ready, you're going to start it slowly again. You'll see a lot of people in the gyms bust it open. 
You don't want to do that because that's going to transfer force into your connective tissues and your joints and make it more likely to get hurt. And it's also not as effective. Nice easy turnaround at the bottom. Notice he's keeping his elbows and shoulders in place. You don't want to elevate your shoulders. You don't want to elevate your elbows in order to try to gain leverage. Because if you do that, it's going to help the handles go up. But the objective of each exercise is not to make the handles move. Handles in the way they just come along for the ride. The goal is to use the machine as a tool to create tension in the targeted muscle group, drive fatigue, produce a stimulus. So don't worry about moving the handles or moving the apparatus. That's only a side effect. Put everything in place, continue to contract. A nice easy turnaround at the bottom. Be sure to keep breathing. Breathe and push, breathe and push. Good, I'm gonna give him some assistance. We're gonna push, 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 push. Now let's go for an eight second negative. I'm gonna hand it off to him. Eight seconds, eight, seven seconds, dead. <laughs> <Dead. laughs> a lot of times too, when you know when I'm training some, I thought you'd probably get about five. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the stakes. I'm gonna make you shoot for something I think you probably can't get. It's gonna squeeze a little Dang, more that out. Pen, that pen got me. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. good. It was about it was about it was about 90 seconds. Good. Yep, so this is the uh, this is the rear delt exercise. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready. Nautilus Nitro. The reason we like to use Nautilus Nitro and MedX is because, first of all, they have cams built into them. So the amount of force your muscle can produce throughout a range of motion, for instance, elbow flexion, changes. It can't produce much force at the bottom. Optimal maximal force is about 90 degrees elbow flexion, then less again at the top. These machines are built in with cams to vary the resistance in accordance to the changing strength curve of a muscle group. So this is gonna be a little bit lighter in the beginning, gradually get harder, and then get lighter again when you go all the way back. This is so we can train the muscle to true failure. Because a lot of the times if you're training on crappy equipment to failure, you may be getting stuck at a sticking point because of the, the way the machine is designed, not because your muscles are dead. Very slow turnaround again. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now try to accelerate through here, accelerate. Good, now stay on that for five seconds, pushing as hard as you can backwards for five, Four, stay on it. Three, two, take it down slow, 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 slow. But you notice too, at the end of the exercise, we're not bang, dropping it down. We're taking it down slow. First of all, safety, obviously. Second of all, how much harder is it to take it down slow? Again, what you wanna do when I'm having you do that isometric contraction, it was when it's over, you just wanna ugh. But if you get that last bit out of here, you're getting a little bit more inroad. And this is important, especially for like new clients or people who are trying this new, who, who don't really know what muscle failure is, because it gets a little more inroad out of it. There's still a skill component to it. Yeah. You gotta be familiar with it. And here's the thing too. You have, your skill component is over with this. You've learned these machines. So a lot of the times people will reach failure because of the lack of skill. You probably noticed over time, the more you use these machines, the harder they got. Yeah. Because your body learned how to do it efficiently, and then you're progressively overloaded, so there is no skill really helping you here. This is all, you know, muscular. Effort. Effort. Yeah, it's all effort. Yeah. All right, so the, the pull down here, believe it or not, this is the most effective biceps exercise you can do, because the biceps has three functions. Supinates, pronates the hand, flexes the elbow, flexes the shoulder. This does all of those in one motion. This is the most effective biceps exercise you can do. It's also extremely um, demanding because it just, it's using a lot of muscle tissue. So with the grip here, a lot of people kind of screw up the grip. You don't want to just like death grip it. You kind of want to set the handle kind of in the groove of your fingers here and then you hook your fingers over the top and lightly hook your thumb. You don't want to squeeze the hell out of it because that is going to cause your forearms to burn out pretty darn quickly. So you want to imagine your hands kind of just like hooks. You can either do a neutral grip or even like a slightly supinated grip because it's going to get a little more involvement in the biceps. Slight lean forward, tucking it down. Slow change in direction. There you go. Whenever you're ready. And you notice how he's not like rocking back and doing all this uh, this other 
crap that you see people in the gym doing. Because the goal is not to just get this weight back. The goal is to create meaningful tension in the targeted muscle group. And in this case, it's going to be the latissimus muscle group. With also a huge involvement in the, the abs and biceps forms. At about 45 seconds now. This is where it's really going to get tough. This is where it takes a lot of focus. Keep on breathing. Breathe and pull. Breathe and pull. Perfect. Got a couple more in there. This is when he's starting to recruit the higher order or fast twitch motor units. These are the ones we're trying to, to stimulate, the fast twitch muscle fibers. Those are recruited when you're working really, really hard towards the end of the set. Those are all the money is. Here we go, come down from here and squeeze fast. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm gonna give you one more assisted repetition. He's gonna be pulling as hard as he can. I'm gonna make sure he gets that through the whole range, right? Breathe, 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 breathe. Pause it. Now drive the elbows down. Go, go, go. Good, good, good. Brief hold. Now take your time taking it up. Let him work, let him work, let him work. And ease it down. Good. <laughs> that way. Right, so with this one, as you probably know, you just want to make sure you keep a slight lean forward. You want to lean into that chest pad. You want to keep this angle. You don't want your chest to come off the pad because that's going to increase the relative involvement of the lat muscles. We're trying to work the trapezius, rear delts, rhomboids, all that stuff. So having a slight lean forward with a row is going to affect the relative involvement of those in a good way. So whenever you're ready. So notice we're doing basic exercises. You don't need a gazillion exercises for every little muscle group. All the muscles work together, they're all connected. So if you do one basic row, you're gonna work all the posterior muscles in the back. You don't need to do a row from a bunch of different angles. That's just a waste of your time. Here we go, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Here we go, bring that one down, we're gonna do a breakdown set. Yeah. So set it down, boom. And go again. So let's call the breakdown set. So if you fail a little early and your muscles die out quick, set it down, drop the weight, you know, 20, 30, 40%, continue. We're gonna break it down again after this. So probably get about three reps before it burns out again. And then I'm gonna drop it one more time. This is another good uh, set extender. Good and squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good, bring that one down slowly. I'm gonna drop the weight one more time. And quick. Boom, boom, go. You'll probably get another two to three. And you'll notice too after this one, your muscles are gonna be a little more cooked than they are on the other ones. Good, drive those elbows. Good. One more, we're gonna go an easy turn around at the bottom. Easy turn, and drive them back, drive them back, drive them back. Good, let's get another one. Slow, slow, slow. Easy through there. Good, now hold that for five seconds, ready? In five, four, three, two, easy, down, go. Now what I just did at the end there, that's called manual resistance. So, by either pushing on the handles, pushing on the weight sack, and, and adding a little bit of manual resistance too, it will cause the trainee's muscles to contract a little bit harder, especially at the end when he's got nothing left, and I tell him to just hold it, and I push down ever so slightly, it's gonna cause the muscles to contract a little harder and create a little deeper inroad. So these are kind of cool little tricks if you're training somebody, uh, you can throw in there to kind of ruin your day. Okay, keep everything nice and straight. Elbows where they are is good. So barbells are good for some things, very bad for others. If you can use a good machine like a Nautilus or Medex, that's great. Get a 
lot of people won't have access to that. So here's a demonstration of a good barbell exercise to curl. Everybody does these, they do them too quick. They are swinging the weight. You don't want to do that. The resistance curve on a barbell curl is actually perfect for the strength curve of your biceps. Here we go. Keep squeezing, keep squeezing. Up. Good, easy changes in direction. Notice he's keeping continuous tension on the biceps. They're frying. All right, ready? Here we go. Up. I'm going to give him some assisted reps. Ready? Five second negative. Five, four, three, two, up again. Five, four, three, two, pause, up again. Five, four. We're going to do this till he can't hold the friggin' weight. Pause. Let's go. Five, four, three, Two, one more, go! Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Cooked. Yeah, forearms especially. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six Can't exercises. Really make Look a, at them. You can't make a fist. And this is because we're, we're performing the exercises properly. To, which stimulate, yeah, yeah, look at your forearms. It's pouring sweat, it's 65 degrees in here, veins are popping, five exercises. Cooked. All right, guys, I'm going to demonstrate the Medex leg press because Anthony's got some knee problems. So um, I'm going to demonstrate how the leg press is performed. Same principles apply to any leg press as well as a squat. It's a good idea to use a leg press in a lot of cases because it's going to take a lot of the tension off your lumbar spine. And uh, over time, most people could develop some problems in their lumbar spine doing a traditional barbell squat. So if you have access to a leg press, probably a better idea to use that just to save your lower back. A squat is no more effective, despite what you've been told. It's no more effective than a leg press. Uh, the leg press is just simply safer. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a high level of intensity, proper cadence, proper form.